960 years ago, a brilliant new object appeared in the constellation Taurus. This guest star, as Chinese astronomers called it, was four times brighter than Venus and was visible both at night and during the day. All of humanity with a view of the northern sky likely saw it, the brightest thing in the sky aside from the sun and the moon. Astronomers from China, Japan, Iraq, Europe, and what's now the U.S. Southwest all recorded the seemingly new star, which gradually faded after its conspicuous appearance on July 4th, 1054, until its disappearance in late spring of 1056. But it didn't disappear from the human view forever. With the advent of telescopes, we were able to see it again by the mid-18th century, but by then it looked very different. Today, we know that the celestial phenomenon of 1054 was a supernova, and its blast created a massive cloud of debris and gas that contained some of the most studied astronomical objects in history, the Crab Nebula and its pulsar M1. We've come a long way in the last 900 years, but there's still a lot we don't know about the supernova that lit up the daytime sky. The supernova of 1054 is actually about 7,500 years old. At 6,500 light years away, the light from the star, and therefore the news of its explosion, just didn't reach us until the 11th century. Supernovae in the observable universe are fairly common, but within our galaxy, the Milky Way, they only happen about every 40 to 80 years. And even these are usually too distant or dim to see with the naked eye. 1054's was the brightest of only eight historically observed supernovae. And you can still see its nebula, the brightest such observable object, with binoculars at night. This is is what's left of the X star's atmosphere, a cloud of ionized helium, hydrogen, and other simple gases. At its center is the neutron star M1. Because it's spinning while emitting a beam of electromagnetic radiation, it's called a pulsar. This is the tiny, extremely dense core left over from the massive star. In its previous incarnation, M1 was around 10 times the size of the sun, when its enormous gravitation caused all of its mass and energy to collapse into an area around 20 kilometers in diameter. Then the force of all that compressed energy pushed back, exploding the star's atmosphere into a cloud that became the crab nebula, leaving the tiny, dense pulsar behind. The Crab Nebula is bright and huge, around 10 light years in diameter. To put that into perspective, the entire solar system is between 1 and 2 light years in diameter, depending on where you draw the edge. And the Crab Nebula is still expanding at a rate of about 1,500 kilometers per second. This is actually how we know it's from the supernova of 1054. 20th century astronomers, including Edwin Hubble and Jan Oort, compared images of the nebula taken at different times to calculate how quickly it was expanding. And then they worked back backward to the date of the explosion, 1054. That math and the fact that the nebula is in the same spot as the legendary guest star implied a connection. But some astronomers later called that connection into question, arguing that the nebula seemed to be expanding too fast to be associated with the 1054 date. As it turns out, in 2007, Dartmouth College astronomers realized that the Crab Nebula's rate of expansion was actually accelerating. Experts now think that a growing bubble of high-energy particles coming from the pulsar is what's driving the acceleration, which was making the supernova harder to date. But one more riddle about the remnants of the 1054 supernova remains. The combined mass of its pulsar and nebula are only a fraction of what it should be, adding up to significantly less than the predicted mass of their parent star. To account for this missing mass, some scientists theorize that the star's own stellar wind, a non-stop torrent of particles that stars emit, blew away its outer layers before it even exploded. It might sound strange, but astronomers have recently confirmed the phenomenon in rare stars known as wolf Rayye, supermassive stars that generate stellar winds so powerful that they rip their own atmospheres to shreds. So a lot has changed in 960 years, but in many ways the supernova of 1054 is as fascinating and strange to modern astronomers as it was to the ancient ones. Thanks for watching this SciShow Space Dose, and I want to give extra special thanks to our subbable subscribers. You make this channel possible, and my hope is that this channel, in turn, keeps you fascinated and curious and passionate about the universe. If you want to keep learning with us, please go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe.